Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of the basic scripting series and in this video we are going to be talking about the client and the server or the server script and the local script so when you type in a script there's series scripts we're going to be covering the normal script and the local script so in the last video we've been using the normal script this is also known as the service script and you might be wondering what is a service what is a local script sorry now a local script is a script that runs on clients not on servers but first I'll tell you what is the client what is the server there are multiple servers in the game as you can see there is server 1 server 2 server 3 server 4 and server 5 server 6 server 7 many servers so this is a server room so how roblox work or multiplayer games work in general is that they have a main server that holds the game so what you're playing is actually just a copy of the game it's not actually the real game so the real game is contained in the server within the server room right here one of these right so this is the server and this is the server's point of view the server doesn't have a monitor but i just want i just wanted to visualize the server and the client so this is what the server sees okay this is the main game the server then gives a copy of the main game to the client what we did in the last video was we used a server script which means that the code was run on the server now with this logic in mind anything changed within a copy does not affect the main game does not affect the server with one exception being the player's own movement so here we have players right here and this player is from client one let's say it's from client one when the player moves it moves on the client first the regardless of your ping your movement will always be smooth because it'll be run on the client first and then roblox automatically sends information to the server it sends information to the server and the server changes position and then because a change happened in the server it sends a copy of this frame to the client so then the client gets updated right here and then the amount of time that it takes for the client and the server to communicate is the ping so let's say that took 60 milliseconds to move player 1 from this position to this position and it took 60 seconds that's the ping so that's how the server and the client works now how does this relate with local scripts and server scripts as i've said before the local script runs on the client and the server script runs on the server anything that is changed in the server is changed for everyone anything that is changed on the client does not change for everyone except for your movement so why is local script useful then if it can change anything then why is it useful in your client there's a few things the gui and your input you can only access your input through your own client and the server can cannot obviously access your input because it has no connections to your keyboard and so which means the local script has access to your inputs local script has access to your inputs and also gui because gui is ultimately on your screen right now you might be wondering um what about those games like anime battle arena where you press a key and there's a movement and there's a skill that happened and the move happened with every single screen with every single player roblox automatically sends information when you move to the server right but you can actually manually send information to the server through remote events so this way we use two things local script and server script the local script is used to detect input as i've said before and after that the server script um, receives the remote event and fire the skill so let's say this you want to create a fireball skill okay let's say whenever you click you fire a fireball or whenever you press f you fire a fireball 
You obviously can't create a fireball on the local script because it only works on your screen and nothing on the copy of a game can be replicated except your movement. So, what do we do? We use remote events. We detect the input, F, and we fire a remote event. And th in this server, we'll catch the remote event and we create fireball with instance.new or something instance.new so in this server we create a ball and anything that's changed in a server will get replicated to the client so boom 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 so that's how server scripts and local scripts work okay so you can put your server script in server storage or server script service or workspace what is service storage? What is service script service? As I've said before, there are several rooms in Roblox that are servers in Roblox. So service storage can only be accessed in the server. So let's add a script in... Actually, there's already a script in service script service. So here is the client. Okay, I'm playing right now. As you can see right here, the current is the client. The your computer. Okay. Oh, I forgot about this. Okay, so when you move... There's no script in the server script service. This is the client's point of view right here. But then we can switch to the server's point of view right here. And as you can see, there's the server script service. So you might be asking, so where should you put your local scripts? So you can put your local scripts in workspace, but that's not good practice. The best way to put your local script is either in start GUI, that's for GUIs, Starter pack or starter character scripts and starter player scripts. What is starter character scripts? So anything in this um, In starter character scripts will be replicated and Copied inside of your character and anything instead of starter player scripts will be copied and pasted into your player So let's add a local script. Let's name this player Also, let's name this character Let's also use starter pack. This is also a good way to put your logo scripts. Let's name the starter pack script or something. Now starter pack copies anything instead of starter pack and puts it inside of your player's backpack. Which means when you want to create a tool, you put it inside of starter pack. Okay. As you can see. Wait, hold on. Character character script, player, player scripts, player, backpack, starter, starter pack script. So before I use local scripts, I want to prove to you that local scripts have no effect on the server. So here's the client, okay? So let's imagine I made a script and I created a part. As you can see, there's a part right here. I can change the size of the part and ultimately when I move to the server that does nothing. If it doesn't happen on the server then it won't happen on other screens. So how would you create stuff? How would you affect change for other players? As I've said before, you put it on the server using server scripts like this and boom it happens on your screen as well. Okay. So now, let's create a local script. Let's put it inside of starter player scripts. I'll make a quick code that fires a remote event. I want to tell my, my server that, hey, I want to create a new part. Okay, that's pretty simple. So I'll say that I want to create a new part after I press F. So first you need to do input detection which can only be done on local scripts. That's the use case of local scripts. So and how do you access your inputs? Well I've um, told you before how to use the Roblox API such as events. So there's this thing as...
So how do you access input? So let's just open up Google real quick and search in Roblox access inputs. Okay, let's look. How do you access inputs? Oh, there's a developer form right here. Game get service user input service. Okay, let's create a variable. Local user input service game get service user input service. So this is the service. So now you can do this user input service dot input began. Watch this again. This is called an event, guys. With events, you can connect it to a function. Connect. What's this? This is a method. Okay. Now this method has a parameter. This expects a function. You can create a function right here. Or you could create the function right here. Okay, there you go. So whenever an input is pressed, this function is get called. So this event obviously returns some parameters, some values. What does it return? Oh, so it returns an input and GPE. We're not going to talk about that. That's not for the video. So the input, okay, it returns an input. That's nice. Now, oh, you can actually check if the input is backspace or something. You can check for the key code. Okay, so let me check if input the key code equals equals anim dot key code. So I want it to be whenever you press F, right? Okay, so we'll check if it's F. Then we'll print hello. Okay. So this only works on the client. Now I want to create a sphere whenever I press F. So how do you do this? You you used um, remote event. So I'll be creating a new remote event in replicated storage remote event right here. So what is replicated storage? This is essentially like workspace where both the client and the server can access it with the purpose of it having shared um, parts. So the thing with workspace is that when you put a part here, everyone can see it, but with replicated storage, no one can see it because yeah, it's a different service. So I'll just create a variable to remote events um, game dot replicate storage dot remote event. There we go. So in the mode event, there is a method, once again, a method called fire, fire server. Wow, what's this? So this fires information, fires a message to the server. Now you can put it, now you can put in any, um, any message you want, any parameters you want, but we'll just keep it blank. Now let's create, actually now we'll just use the script and Let's create a, pram, uh, a variable for remote event game dot replicate storage the remote event. So remote event has an event called on server event. So this event runs whenever I fire the remote. So the thing right now is that when I fire a remote, nothing happens because no one is catching nothing in the server is catching the remote. But now we can catch the remote and actually do something about it. You can put in a function inside of the connect method. Okay, so there's one fixed parameter whenever someone fires a remote event, and that fixed parameter is player. This returns the player that fired the parameter. Let's just print the player. Player, okay. This prints the player. Now, when, so whenever you add in new parameters like hello, hello two, you cannot do this. You can't do hello and hello two because the first parameter is always player. So yeah. Now we can just create a ball or whatever part ball dot shape ball. All dot size equals factor three dot new. This is a built-in table. Okay, and ball dot parent equals workspace. There we go. Let's try this out. Let's press F and let's see if that works. Okay. Oh, oops. What is going on? All right. As you can see. Actually, where's my code? 
Is it in character? Um, where's the code? Oh, it's in player, right? Yeah, it's in player. So let's press F. Boom, there's a ball. See, it works. So we created the remote vent. We catch the remote vent in the server. We created a ball. And because a change happened in the server, it replicated to everyone. And yeah, I think that's it for this video. We've talked about how servers work, how clients work, how remote events work, and how to communicate between servers and clients. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you.